Hi guys, it's Reagan and welcome back to another video. Today's video I'm very excited about because we're going to be chatting through my spring cozy faves. That's right, all of the items I've been loving from cozy games, home items, TV shows, movies that I can't wait to share with you guys today and also in my opinion bring about the spring spirit if you will. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in. The first favorite I'm going to be chatting about is actually makeup and they're also the sponsor of this video and currently my entire face, so let's talk about it. That's right, I'm so excited to be partnering up with Merit for this video. I have truly been using and loving their products for years. They're a staple to my everyday makeup routine, and I'm so pumped to be chatting about them more today with y'all. If you're not familiar, Merit is all about reimagining luxury beauty, making it well edited and accessible. All their products are considered luxury by composition. They're actually priced about 30% lower than their luxury competitors, which is amazing. Not to mention, they're also very skincare focused with all of their products being non-pore clogging. For me, I really love wearing makeup and I tend to wear it almost every day, but I also like a really seamless, straightforward, and quick routine. I also like more sheer leaning makeup that looks a bit more natural, but I also like the option to be able to build it up if I have like a big night out, if you will, which is why I've been wearing Merit for years. I also like to apply everything with my hands. I'm not a makeup brush girl, which also is one of the reasons why I've liked Merit for so long, though you can definitely apply Merit with a brush and they have great brushes, but I'm just, I know who I am and it's always going to be apply my makeup with my finger. <laughs> Let's chat about and feature some of my favorite Merit products that I truly wear every single day. The first is the Minimalist and this is the Perfecting Complexion Stick. This is awesome, especially if you don't like to wear foundation. I am not really a foundation wearer, but this is so great because I'm able to basically like a crayon, put it into places that I do want some additional extra coverage and I can blend it in with my fingers. It's so easy to throw in my bag and touch up throughout the day. I wear it under my eyes. I put it on some of my rosacea on my cheeks. It's simply the greatest and it doesn't feel heavy on my skin. I have some sensory issues when it comes to foundation and this doesn't bother me at all. I love it. Next up is the Flush Balm, which is a cheek tint. I wear this personal shade basically every single day. It's called Beverly Hills, and it's in this perfect sort of terracotta peachy color, which I personally really love with my complexion. This is amazing. It goes on so seamlessly. I have this in multiple colors. This is the product I've been using the longest from Merit. Obsessed, obsessed, obsessed. Alongside my blush, I've also been applying my Dewy Highlight Balm in the color Kava. This is so illuminating. I love how natural it is and it really does capture the light throughout the day. It's also, again, so easy to apply with my fingers, which is necessary. And then lastly, a product that's newer to my life, but I simply will no longer be able to live without it. And that is their Shade Slick, which is a tinted lip oil. And I have mine in the color Marrakesh, which is truly the most perfect terracotta peachy color. I love Shade Slick like this and this is so easy to apply. It's incredibly hydrating and it's not sticky at all, which is truly the best. I'm wearing it right now in this video and I've been wearing it ever since I got it every single day now for the past six weeks. New favorite lip product. I truly cannot say more positive things about Merit. They have seamlessly fit into my makeup routine again for years. They're so easy to apply, straightforward, and I love the finish it has on my skin. If you guys want to learn more about Merit, I'll have them linked down below, including some of my personal favorite products. They have so many different shades and colors to choose from that again would work so well across so many different skin tones and skin types. Listen, I just love a seamless and easy makeup routine and Merit delivers on that. And then not to mention with your first Merit order, you also get this incredibly handy makeup bag, which I love both the design and aesthetics of. That's my first favorite of the video. Alrighty, moving away from makeup into the next category, which is going to be cozy games. These next few cozy games are the games I've already been playing and loving, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. They have completely all taken over my lives in different ways. And the first game I'm going to mention is actually Ball Baldur's Gate. This game is not technically cozy at all, but for some reason it has very quickly become cozy to me. I will say this game is immensely popular and one of the really cool features about it is that it has difficulty settings that allows you to prioritize story over combat so you can make it very, very difficult or you can make it much easier depending on your gaming needs. I'm personally playing it on the easiest mode. I've loved the Baldur's Gate franchise for as long as I can remember and one of my big driving factors in wanting to get a gaming PC was to be able to play this game and I have simply not been disappointed at all but if you're not familiar this is like an RPG mixed with tabletop D&D &D mechanics fantasy game. You create your own character and you're questing out into the world to try to solve this like weird alien mystery along the way. You pick up people to add to your party 
And uh, it's a very story forward game. And a big part of it is like every decision you make branches off into a new tree. So you can play the game multiple times in multiple different ways and get different experiences and different character connections. The running joke also is that Baldur's Gate is basically a dating sim and they're not wrong. A big part of this game is also romance. And I'm not gonna lie, it's a blast. And I'm currently in a very complicated love triangle with me, Astorian, and Gail. So we'll see how that plays out. I'll keep you guys posted. Speaking of another game I can't stop playing, let's talk about Stardew Valley, another well-known beloved game. This game has been out for a very long time and I have fallen in and out of obsession with it over the years, but since a new patch release came out, I'm full steam ahead with Stardew Valley. And honestly, a great game to pick up if you're kind of new to playing video games to check out for yourself. It's basically a farming sim. You're living in this community, you're romancing, you're making friends, you're doing quests, you're going into the mines, putting in a hard day's work, you're growing crops, you're tending to your chickens and cows. It's so straightforward in theory, but so addicting in practice. I cannot stop playing. I particularly like to play this game on handheld so I can play it and watch reality TV at the same time time, but complications because the new patch isn't yet out on Switch, but I am right back into my Stardew farm. I started a new farm. Currently fall harvest for me. I'm thinking about my pumpkin preserves as we speak. I can't stop playing. I love Stardew Valley so much. It never, it never gets old. It doesn't matter how many times and how many hours I've put into it, it never gets old. Next up is a newer release and that is Princess Peach Showtime. This came out in March and it has been such a delight. Obviously, I've been a Peach girl my whole life. So to have a game come out where Peach is the main character, I mean, hello, obviously I'm gonna pick it up and check it out for myself. The game mechanics of this, I would honestly describe it as kind of like Super Mario Wonder with a Mario RPG and almost like Mario Party in Smash. You basically play as Peach and she enters this theater that's taken over by this evil power. And from there, she has to enter these different stages that almost feel like contained mini games. Peach gets a new outfit. She gets a new set of powers to help her defeat the level. It's a very simple and straightforward gameplay, but personally, sometimes I want simple and straightforward. The mechanics are fun. The animation is so cute. And I love how each stage feels very distinct from one another and like what you have to do in it is like very specific. It's so fun and clever. My only qualm is that I wish it was longer. It's kind of a short game in terms of gameplay and I ate it up, you know? So I wish there was more, but it was a blast. And then lastly, again, because I've recently got a gaming PC, I have to mention The Sims 4, which is now free to play, which I think is pretty cool, though they do get you with those expansion packs, which I did download the Cottage Core expansion pack and some other ones. So it's not so free to me anymore. But I grew up on The Sims. The Sims was foundational to my life and personality and I haven't played in so long. It's hilarious how it all just comes right back to you. I've already been downloading custom content. I already remembered all of the cheat codes, uh, both to get a lot of money and also to adjust things for decorating. I'm watching live streams of people building and decorating houses. It's, it's a problem but not a bad problem. I'm having a really fun time. I've always been a Sims player that's been more focused on the building aspect than the actually playing out the Sims life aspect, but I'm trying to change that by actually letting my characters live and, you know, do things instead of just like waiting in the wings, waiting for their house to be finished being built and then never actually letting them do anything after that. But we'll see if I change. Next up, we have some other cozy hobbies I've been enjoying. I'm happy to report I'm back into puzzling and I picked up two new puzzles. I'm really pumped to show off. They're both from Gallison. The first is this one. It's like a book club print that has all of these different books, all these hands and treats on this table. I really like this puzzle because there's all these like mini areas to do. And if you're a puzzler, you kind of know what I mean. So like every night I'll sit down and I'll like, oh, okay, I'll do the coffee pot or I'll do the sunglasses. And it's really easy to start and stop because I do get a little obsessive with puzzles and I'll like sit down for hours at a time. So I find this one's a lot easier for me to manage my time effectively. One that I know I will not be able to manage my time effectively and once I start, I won't be able to stop is this stitch by stitch like yarn store. I mean, look how unbelievably cute and colorful this is. I am truly in love. It makes me want to pick up yet another hobby, knitting and embroidery. Honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if that did eventually happen because I love going into yarn and craft stores because they're just so beautiful to behold. So when I saw this puzzle, 
I got it. And I'll be doing this next once I finish my reader society puzzle. Lastly, we have to talk about Lego. I love Lego so much. I've already done a few different boxes of spring flowers. I did lotus. I did the lotus flowers and then I also did the daffodils which I have in a vase in my office and they're so fun and easy. I definitely want to get one of the larger flower sets too like the wildflower ones but I also have this like bug Lego set, which I feel like would be perfect for the spring. Succulents have also been very much on my mind, but I'm trying to control myself because we all know that Lego is pricey. Um, though I will say some of their flower sets tend to be priced much lower than some of their other sets, which I like. And they're also really easy to use in home decor. And they're a fun gateway to Lego, but be careful because once you start, it's very hard to stop. Next up, I have a few cozy home items I wanna show up. First is my David's Tea Cloud Mug. I love these tea mugs by David's Tea. They basically have these little individual steepers that fit right in and they have this lid. This one in particular screams springtime. It just makes me very joyful. Blue sky full of clouds just makes me want to go outside. I love this mug. This is currently my current favorite mug at the top of the docket, if you will. She's delightful. I also recently picked up this strawberry candlestick from Anthropology. They also have a lemon and an orange one. There's something about fruit decor that I cannot get enough of and I just feel like this is very springtime but I'm gonna have this out in my house all year round. I will say the Anthropology spring collection drops are always some of the most dangerous personally because I love a bumblebee, a fruit, a flower, and home decor and there's just an abundance of that right now and it's all very good, I won't lie, but I just contained myself to this candlestick at the moment. And lastly, I wanted to shout out my new mechanical keyboard. I got the Logitech keyboard. I really liked the colorway and I also really like that I have the option to change out the caps if I wanted to add more color, but for now I wanted something a little more neutral for my desk setup, not something so bright and bold. The sound of this keyboard, hold on is quite nice and it also came with this really cute little cloud wrist rest which I adore too but I now officially have two mechanical keyboards and I do switch them out depending on my mood so this is when I'm feeling more like dreamy and calm and wanting something more neutral and then I have a pink one for when I'm feeling more bold and vibrant and you know that is how a keyboard collection problem begins but I do really like this Logitech keyboard I won't lie. Next up I have three cozy books to recommend all of these books definitely put a smile on my face made me feel happier and lighter when I finished it which I cannot always say for the books I read if you watch my bookish content. The first book has to be Emily Wilde's Map to the Otherlands by Heather Fawcett. Truly such a delightful series centering not only romance but also friendship and magic. I love how it centers fae stories and folklore but in this story we're introduced to one of our main characters Emily Wilde and she is one of the foremost experts on fae in her world. This kind of has a historical setting and she's also a professor at Cambridge. At the beginning of book one Emily is nearing completion on her like life's work just this encyclopedia of fairies full of fairy information and fae lore and stories. She needs a few more pieces for it to be finished. So at the beginning of book one, she's basically traveled to this faraway village to get that information. And much to her great frustration, her work rival Wendell also arrives in this town. He's very charismatic and quickly wins over the townspeople, but he's also kind of flippant and emotional and they form an unlikely alliance and also feelings begin to form between them. This series really balances like fae and folklore and stories and exploration as well as like academic research. There's footnotes throughout this entire series while also having a really sweet and well-paced romance between Emily and Wendell, which I truly adored. Their differences in personalities is just so sweet. I laugh out loud reading this series and the Faye storylines going into book two were even more explosive than book one. I really appreciate the balance of fantasy and romance within this series. It's just so delightful and I was not disappointed at all with the sequel. Another book I read recently that really warmed my heart was Yumi and the Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson. This is a standalone Brandon Sanderson novel that I truly would highly recommend to anyone, even if you haven't read anything by this author. Similar to what I would say about Tress of the Emerald Sea, this is a story that's dual POV. We're following our two main characters that appear to be from two different planets. The first is Painter. His planet is dark, full of like neon lights and some technological advancements. His job is that of a painter, where he basically stalks the streets to take down these things called nightmares. And to do this, he literally paints and absorbs their like power into his painting. The other character we follow is Yumi. She is a powerful like spiritual being 
on her home planet. A lot of people in her world rely on her to basically summon these spirits that are then transformed into like practical goods. She has a very rigid and structured life. She doesn't really have any free time. She doesn't have any friends or family. And she's sort of seeking for something more at the beginning of this book. And then the unexplainable happens. And that is a Freaky Friday situation between our two main characters switch into the other's lives. And it's so fun and so charming. It's coming of age. It has romance. It has a really central, interesting mystery at play too. There's some action, but it's truly about two characters kind of on the precipice of the next chapter of their lives, choosing themselves, rooting for themselves, and also of course working together and choosing each other. It's really cute. I feel like it has a really great balance of like action and character dynamics too. And the last book I'm going to recommend as a cozy favorite is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. This is the first book to the Once Upon a Broken Heart series, and this is like a spin-off series from the very popular Caraval series, but, 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 you do not need to read the Caraval series before you read this. I personally did not. This is actually a YA fantasy series that is so adorable, and I also fly through each installment I have read. In it, we're introduced to our main character, Evangeline, and at the beginning of book one, she has had her heart broken, so she decides to turn to the god of broken hearts, because in this world, there are these, like, all-powerful beings that have very specialized focuses, and Jax is the god of broken hearts, if you will. <laughs> so she turns to him, and he agrees to help her in exchange for three kisses of his choosing, and from there, Evangeline's life is completely turned upside down. She quickly becomes like one of the most sought after women in the entire empire. She also participates in this competition to win the hand of a prince in an entirely different realm. And Jax has his own agenda involving her and a prophecy. And they quickly get caught up in all different sorts of things together. It's really endearing. It's written like a fairy tale. And the quality and the writing style of this book is really successful. It's coming of age. You're going to root for Evangeline. She's naive, but cute and very, very rootable. And the dynamics between her and Jax is also incredibly entertaining. It has a dash of romance, but it also has adventure and again, lots of self-discovery. I read the first two books in this series and adored them both immensely, and I would highly recommend them, especially if you're looking for kind of a lighter fairy tale leaning adventure story, this is for you. Alrighty, we're officially into our last two categories, and that is TV and movies, and boy, I need to buckle in and talk to you guys about some TV shows because I have a couple that have completely taken over my life. The first one, if you take any TV show recommendation from me ever, ever again, let it be this one because this show has become my entire personality. I don't shut up about it. I actively have convinced most of my friends to start it themselves and they have also loved it if they hadn't seen it already and the show i'm talking about is hospital playlist this is a k-drama that's on netflix and it's basically a slice of life story following a group of friends who are all surgeons at the same hospital as well as a bunch of tertiary characters in and around their lives it's so unbelievably sweet and endearing. The connection and friendship and understanding and love within this series is truly unparalleled. I laugh, I cry in every single episode. And I will say, if you're like, Reagan, I don't like medical dramas, then my answer to you would be literally same. This is the only medical drama I have ever liked and it's not that gruesome at all like there are medical aspects to the plot it's really about the characters of this hospital more than anything else i love this show i think about this show every day every second all i want is to be done with my responsibilities so i can sit down on the couch and watch hospital playlist clay and i are almost done with the final season and i am unwell about it like i don't really know what i'm gonna do when i don't have a new episode of hospital playlist to watch probably just restart it but if you've never seen a K-drama before, this or Crash Landing on You, that's all you need. Hospital Playlist is so good and so cozy. Oh, I love this show so much. When I'm not watching K-dramas, I'm definitely watching reality TV and I have two shows I'm so excited to talk about. The first is The Traitors. Oh my gosh, this is another show I have completely fallen headfirst into. I watched season one of the American version of this show last year when it aired, but this year with season two of the show airing, Peacock also put seasons one and two of the Australian and UK versions of the show to stream and I have watched them all. <laughs> I 
love the concept and setup of the show. It's so fun and so interesting. And I love how like over the top and theatrical the show is too, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So basically The Traders is a real life game of mafia. If you're familiar, basically a group of people all go and stay in one house and then the host picks three or four people out of that group to be murderers. And every night they choose people to murder, but they have to pretend that they're faithful during the day. And it's up to everyone else to try to figure out who the murderers are. It utilizes dramatic irony so well. There's these fun little challenges they also do to try to get money for the pot. All about relationships and tricking people. It's such an interesting character study. And the different types of personalities that are on all of these shows are so good. The American version is all like reality TV show celebrities, but the UK and Australian versions are just normal people. Both are amazing. Another show that is recently back that I've just been loving and a lot of my friends are finally marathoning this series for the first time is Summer House. This new season of Summer House is top notch. I have been loving it so much. If anyone else who watches my channel watches Summer House, please let me know your thoughts and feelings. I mean, I've got romances to root for. I've got an engagement crumbling apart. The setup of this reality TV show, a bunch of people get a share house for the summer and there's just lots of drama. Some of the seasons are much better than other seasons, but this season in particular is so good and it's taking over my life and all my friend group chat. And then the last category I'm gonna talk about is movies. I have not seen a lot of movies recently because again, I've been addicted to Hospital Playlist, which each episode of Hospital Playlist is basically a movie, I won't lie, and The Traitors. But I did rewatch Dune 1 and go see Dune 2 in theaters and they're both excellent. Upon rewatch, I like Dune 1 even more and Dune 2 was truly a sci-fi masterpiece from the aesthetics to the storytelling to the acting to just everything. It was a feast for the eyes. It was a feast for the ears. It was, it blew all of my incredibly high expectations out of the water and made me want to read Dune. I've never really been interested in reading Dune and now all of a sudden I keep going, should I be reading Dune? Um, obviously this is not a cozy movie series at all, but I did want to just speak on it because it's a very popular one right now and for good reason. It also was just very satisfying to see like a serious sci-fi adaptation. I feel like because we've kind of been in this very popular Marvel bubble in cinema recently, it just feels like all large budget sci-fi movies have had to have this like happy-go-lucky kind of fun element to it alongside the serious sci-fi stuff that's at play. So it's nice to see kind of like our generation's Lord of the Rings, if you will, in terms of like a big budget, serious adaptation of a serious story. And I loved it. And I hope this means we're going to get more fantastic and intense adaptations of some of my favorite sci-fi fantasy stories. I would Love that. Alrighty guys, those are my spring cozy faves. Again, big shout out to this video's sponsor, which is Merit. Again, I'll have my faves and their site linked down below if you guys want to learn more. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye.